Round five, I want to do what will effectively be the finals, which will be... Is that going to be? Let's check the standings. Or not the standings. Let's refresh the standings. And let's... Okay, Manitoba and Golda. That'll be the finals. So the next round, I want to do Manitoba and Golda. Unless the... Or whatever the channel launch has decided that they don't want to... Let me do Manitoba and Golda. Which would be rude. Let's see. Manitoba and Golda. Match 80. All right. So very quick into round five. Probably going to have another break after round six, assuming everything goes relatively well. And then from that, it'll be tiebreakers. Because it's round five, which is like, technically the finals in a sense, but it's there is still another round. So there's another round. I call it the finals because whoever wins this is going 5-0 and is pretty well guaranteed. I mean, okay, granted, round six could screw with it. But this round, looking at the standings, you know, it's 4-0, 4-0, which are the three ones. But yeah, like, someone is going 5-0. One of Manitoba Golda is going 5-0. After that, we have round six, which will totally mess with that. Unless whoever wins this round ends up winning the next round, in which case they're guaranteed to be a winner. And there's still some room, I think, at the bottom to sort things out. Because, yeah, it'd be a bunch of 4-2s. Sorry, it'd be, four, it'd be five four ones, And then... A boatload of 3-2s, about 10 or so 3-2s. And then round five, so that'll throw everything off. Like we could have a 6 0, but we have a 6 0 and a few 5 1s. Because we went to 4. We 4 4 1s. Alright, 5 4 1s. And a bunch of 4 2s. And then if one of those 4 1s match up against each other, then they end up going. So we probably end up having 2 or 3 5 1s. Maybe 4 5 1s. And that would basically be our the last the setup for the elimination round. For the tiebreaker elimination round. I, okay, Google Frog and Chat. I don't know if it'll be massive second place playoffs. It'll definitely be massive playoffs. One way or the other, we're going to have fairly large tiebreaker. One way or the other. Because we have two more rounds left. Round five will set up whoever is undefeated, and then round six might end up having them be defeated. Like, we don't know. That's that's the thing. If whoever wins this round wins round five, or wins round six, then it'll be massive second place. If they lose round six, then it'll be just massive playoffs. All right. So we are going to be going on to Mecha and Sonia once again to watch Manu 12 and Gota duke it out for whoever gets 5-0. And who gets 4-1. So whoever has the chance of going undefeated into first and who is going to be me, who is going to be hoping for a first place tiebreak match? But we are again back in the stadium. Minute twelve to the south. Go to north. Go to what do you have? Oh, oh, spiders! Proxy spiders! Proxy jump bot from minute twelve, just like last time. All right, we are going to be starting in just a moment. As soon as the players are ready in the pregame, Gorda is completely ready. They they are they are good to go. They they want to get this thing started. Manu twelve looks like they're setting up their economy, and that is going to be that round five starting in a couple seconds. Manu twelve, could you please place your commander? There we go. Manitoba places their commander. And that should be it. So Proxy Jump Bot versus Proxy Spider. Or not Proxy. High Ground Jump Bot versus High Ground Spider. Proxy is the wrong way of looking at it. But yeah, High Ground Jump Bot versus High Ground Spider. That is, that is a thing. That is a thing that's happening. 
Pyro coming in from Manitol, just like last time. And very quick flea is coming in from Gorda. Gorda actually going to be able to get into Manitol first. Double checking what Manitol is up to, but this map is clearly just, you know, jump butt spider on the high ground. <laughs> Which is funny that regular Adansonia was... Oh, wait. No, I think it's because there is this little alcove. If I recall correctly, regular Adansonia just had, like, a line through here. And I don't think there was any real platform in the low section. I mean, you could obviously go from the line, but it wasn't quite as easy to set it up. I mean, it still set it up. It actually would be harder to counter. Because, like, on Mechanids on you, you can actually go up the ramp to fight it. But we don't really see that. And what we see instead is both players trying to do the same thing. Like, use the cliffs, or bypass the cliffs completely. Manor 12 coming in with a little bit of a stronger force in terms of actual direct firepower. Venom about to come in here could cause some problems with the pyro. <laughs> I mean, that buff was a thing. It got readjusted, but it's still a thing. Ooh, pyro getting stunned out in the middle of the sky. There it is. Pyro is down very quickly. Gorda pretty well saving themselves from an embarrassing defeat early on, as you saw with FFC. So Mana 12 still has to actually fight the game proper. They are not going to be able to go in with just, you know, the the one pyro tearing everything apart. But they might still be able to do some damage. I mean, the Venom's now... Jeez, that was pretty scary, actually. The Venom's on top of the Lotuses. That pyro's got to be careful. Gota's still running heavy on the Fleas. Just going for exactly what I wanted to see before. Go across the map. Set it for screening, set it just to know exactly what's going on. At this point, it's just setting up fleas around all the possible expansions to know when Mana 12 is expanding there. Possibly to intercept it. And that is... That's what... That's what Goda's doing. And Mana 12, on the other hand, is just trying to find ways to harass. Sending pyros around... Looking for any kind of opening they could use to deal some damage. Gorda has not really provided that. The one thing that Gorda hasn't done much here is expand. And we do see the flea coming in here, but yeah, constables actually do deal damage. A, a pittance of damage, but fleas have 40 HP, so it really doesn't matter. It's like the one unit that does not one-shot the flea, but it still kills the flea. And more Ven This is just... Gorda showing what the Venoms can do. Still, Manu 12 with the same strategy as before, pushing very hard into the front of the map. Not really focusing on the backyard, just setting up the front of the map as quickly as possible. Commander... Gorda's commander getting heavily damaged. Manu 12 jumping in. Has a bit of an advantage coming into the fight, having... Gorda's commander already damaged. Manu 12 sees the police coming in here. Doesn't really bother them. Gorda's commander has until, or rather, Man 12 has until Gorda's commander has jump available. And that is going to be not, oh, just in time, but it's not quite enough. Gorda's commander dies in flight. Manu 12, nice comp snipe, absolute last second, but it worked. Took out Gorda's commander. And with that, Gorda is now just so far behind. 14 metal per second compared to 28. Mana 12. Revenge, however, is coming in in the form of Venoms. Mana 12 losing their commanders as well. Oh, are they? Are they? No, there it is. The Venoms take out the commander. It was looking tricky, but no, that was... That is a commander trade. Mana 12 still in an advantageous position economically, though. Not as strongly. Go to managing to get themselves back into this game, but... Oof. That is a tough position to be in. And Gota at this point have a lot of energy was lost. I mean, both players lost so much energy income from their commander. And now Gota, oh, losing all the wind generators. Why did they put them so close together? Single pirate able to wipe out almost all of Gota's energy infrastructure, and that is so much of their production potential. Like, there's energy reclaim, at least, on this map. It's not completely hopeless. But, man, that is... That is ho that is tough. Gota finally getting their metal back on track. Still behind on energy. They're getting the reclaim of the trees. I don't know if they... They must realize the crates 
are reclaimable. No, I guess they don't. It's like the crate, reclaiming the crate would give Gota a ton of energy to work with. Also give them more metal than they could work with right now, but still a ton of energy to work with. But hey, they got the trees. They can use that for now. Still, Gulda surprisingly not spacing out their wind generators that much. Opening up to the pyro, though the pyro are much more concerned about seeing what they can get on the bottom side of the map and avoiding the venoms! Which of course they will, because the venoms are scary. Same time, fleas going out over to the southeast side of the map, trying to find any openings they can. They will find the constable. The constable will likely jump away. But, yeah, it's not bad. But yeah, the constable will definitely jump away, but they don't really have anywhere to jump away to. Going to be a question of multitasking. They've got the pyro in their main base that they can start taking out. Not going for it, though. Fleas over here. Oh, they don't have no chance. The Lotus is going to be done before the Fleas can do anything. Coming in here, tries to take out the Lotus. Does take out the Constable. Constable not jumping. Man of 12 losing this entire Southeast expansion attempt and losing the Constable they were using for that purpose, I think. Oh, they still have some Constables. They're still good for Constables. Yeah, they got four Constables in the map. It's fine. But they don't have any Constables over to the Southeast, so Golda at least has a bit of an opening to get their economy back on track relative to Nano 12. But Nano 12, they are expanding aggressively. They're setting up their overdrive aggressively. They're reclaiming aggressively. And Golda is not really doing much of this. So Golda kind of falling apart. And now with the Pyros and Modders, all the Modders, that's it. That is, that's it. Flea is going to come in and try to deal with the moderators. The pyros get rid of the fleas. You'd need to have recluses. That's about the only thing I can think of that would work. Otherwise, anything else just gets slowed down. I, I like the use of the fleas, but I think Golda might have over-relied on them. And surprisingly, under-relied on using them for raiding. Because, you know, going around the side here and taking out some of this base would have actually been quite strong. Yeah, Gota hasn't really expanded much. They haven't really built out much. They used Venoms a fair bit, but not that much. So there they come. Regardless. Actually, that was that's a really good setup. Flea's able to get rid of the moderators thanks to the Venoms. I mean, it's a, it was a Pyrrhic victory on Gota's part, but not a bad way of doing it. To use the Fleas for that purpose. Still, though, Fleas do die to Constables. That is the thing. Fleas are not able to fight raiders like it's the thing when you're fighting the tank matchup or the jump bot matchup you cannot just raid with a single flea and expect you're going to kill their constructor the constructor can fight back so it really isn't an option go to now 12 metal per second compared to 25 for mana 12 no safe spaces to expand to for Golda. Mana 12 looking like they are going to be able to take this with very little issue. A little sad for Golda. I mean, you know, they had a pretty strong start, but unfortunately for them, it's just not enough. Golda looking to get a little backyard raid here, seeing if there's anything built up. There is not. And they can't go through the water directly. Oh, wait, they can. Oh, sheesh, that's shallower than I thought it was. My bad. Still, the fleas trying to come in here. What hope they have is very slim. But they get rid of the construct. Oh, they get rid of the constables. They might get rid of the lotus, actually. Oh, well, they got rid of the lotus. But the metal extractors might just end up killing them. You have to fight move fleas when you're killing metal extractors. You can't just move them. They, they will die to the metal extractors exploding. But again, another set of fleas coming in here. They could get... Oh, never mind. Nope, there's the phoenix. Oh, beautiful phoenix shot. Yeah, that is that is over. I, I like Golda's commitment to the fleas. I think, oh, redback flea. Okay, they got the plates going. So it's not just flea. I mean, their economy, they got the reclaim. It's kind of getting back up there, but it's so far... I, I just gotta look at the army value. Let's look at the army value. Yeah, it's... Three th it's a threefold difference between the army values. So, oops, unless Manu 12 can very quickly set up right now 
to deal with all of these pyros, they are just done. They're so far behind. More fleas coming in, not the answer to pyros, but you know, redbacks do help. Redback venom definitely helps. And fleas trying to come in here, and it's just not enough. Why are you sending in fleas to pyros? Pyros hard counter fleas. For that matter, oh, the redbacks went forward. I see. Trying to break Manitoul's beachhead. Not a bad idea, but at this point, it's too little too late. Golda has simply just lost their backyard for that. I mean, it's it's a gambit, I suppose. It seems to be the idea Golda had. Just lose the defenses over the backyard in order to allow them to move forward without the pyros obstructing them. It might actually work. I mean, the redbacks coming in here, there is the one phoenix... Ah, uh, never mind. Nope, the moderators are here. That's... Well, Golda looks to be deciding to go for it regardless. But with that moderator there, there's no way for the Redbacks to cleanly approach. Able to do some damage, just not really able to get a kill in. Now, Golda expect to do some reclaiming over here, get their economy still in a reasonable position. But yeah, the Redback trying to come in here. That is it. Golda throws in the towel as frustrated as ever. Or at least expresses frustration. Not sure if they're throwing the towel, but man, I guess they reclaimed the thing. And I like the use of the recluse. Like I said, the gambit kind of made sense, but at the same time, it's just. It's just so much. To get rid of the phoenix as well. I think one tarantula might have helped, but again, it's like. Would have had been recluse with the redbacks, and the pyro still would have been a pain. Granted, Golda is still managing to hold on somewhat, but again, I don't know why he's using fleas against pyros. Like, in what universe is that supposed to work? Alright, well, anyway, Golda toxically throws in the towel, and Mana 12 is going into round 6 undefeated. Has a chance of getting solid first place. And signing up Golda for all of the rage. Rage. It's all the rage. Moving on, though, we do have another match. I'm sure I can pull up another match here. Got loads of running matches. This actually wasn't a very long game. Okay, what do we have here? Let's see... I want to see FFC versus Google Frog. It's on Scary Land. Yeah, the Reclaim Tracker Polygons, I can't remember who made them, actually. They are just... No, they were added in a couple versions ago. Just... Default widget. It's really nice. It's a little... I mean... It's a little bit clunky to look at. It would have been... I suppose it would have been nice if there was a, like, a curve to him, but... It's... it works. And not necessarily a circle, it's some sort of oblong thing. Anyway, game! Game is happening, I'm not doing a great job of tracking it. Alright, shield bots coming in for Google Frog, FFC going for Cloaky. Classic matchup, Cloaky versus Shields. And so far, Google Frog is providing a bit of an advantage, but... Not much. Oh, those glazes, they flanked just right, they'd be fine, but no, they're having a real hard time finding... Position to get in. Get, there's the flank. Getting rid of a bunch of bandits in the process. FFC able to win out on the attrition battle as a result. Google Frog switching over to more shield ball units. Oh, and FFC almost gets out of the, the geothermal plant. Doesn't quite manage to take it out. That shield ball switch being responded to by knights. Does it take out the shields directly? Seems to be working okay. FFC able to at least hold on to their territory, but Google Frog expanding aggressively over to the southeast and northwest. Pushing that center a hard. As we get back into real time, Google Frog is... Okay, got the Racketeers up, able to stop those knights from doing all the damage in the world. However, it's not... Look oh, no, that's Racketeer, that's Thunderbird. Got the Thunderbird up to deal with that damage. Now, FSC back in a position where they can take out the thugs directly. No felons really in play. 
Doesn't look like that's Google Frog's strategy. They want Thug, they want... They want Rogue. They're not going for Felon Ball. And against Cloakie, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, again, the Knights, they take out the Shields. The Felons are kind of useless in that context. More Thunderbird coming back here. There's the turnaround. Google Frog seeing, of course, that they can take out the units. I mean, the ones that aren't being killed by the Phoenix directly. More Phoenix Fire coming in here. But the Thunderbird disarm is just wearing off. Google Frog at least still able to buy some time, get some space. Not a bad situation to work with. Unfortunately, it looks like the Thunderbird did go down in the process. And now the undisarmed knights coming in here, taking out quite a bit. FFC still winning in the attrition by about a thousand metal, but it's not nothing. Google Frog setting up more expansions over. They're still doing very strongly economic. It, it's the economy for Google Frog is much stronger simply because they can pull into overdrive from here. Like FFC's economy is about on par with Overdrive and Reclaim. FFC, however, is taking quite a bit more territory. Has actually managed to break some of the Southeast here. Stopping what looks like a Stardust. Yep, Skydust gets cancelled. Convict goes down. Conjure will now have room to start rebuild. Oh, they don't. Skydust over here is making that impossible. Same time. Are we getting a Fax Snipe? We are getting a... Okay, these Ravens. Where are they going? This looks like a fax snipe, but it's not quite enough. For oh, no, it's not a fax snipe. Is it a metal snipe? Nah, it's a fusion snipe. There we go. Getting rid of the fusion plant. FFC's energy knocked down a little bit. Knocking down their overdrive, more importantly. Giving Google, Google, Frog, giving Google Frog a very strong situation to work with. Google Frog, on the other hand, with the proxy cloak bot factory of their own. I, okay, it's been spotted. I don't know what has been spotted. Okay, now it's been spotted. The Swiss. Swiss spotted it, taking out the Thunderbird. Google Frog not really ahead of FFC economically, though, so this is a bit risky. A lot of units that are being constructed here. Yes, you know, 20 metal per second being pulled into this factory. That's minus 5. That's my. Oh, sorry. 11 metal per second pulled into the factory. Main base is still kind of higher priority. Mainly going for the air factory. I mean, that's pulling, yeah. Minus 20, minus 30 ish. So most of their economy is going into the factory. A little bit's going into shields. Yeah, so the. It's. You know, 30 15 5 split, kind of. Or 20 15 5 split. But that does mean that Google Frog is in a bit of an awkward position in terms of the unit composition. And they gotta be using the glaives for raiding. But they also have to deal with the fact that FFC has pretty strong defenses all over. Especially against raiders. And of course getting their shield bot set up or shield ball set up. Which is working okay, and actually does have a felon now, thanks to the Aspis providing a little bit of extra shield power. Oh, and a beautiful flank coming in here on the knights on top of the disarm. Put him into a very awkward position. However, that Felon's got to be careful. Phantom is in play, has not been taken out despite the screening. And FFC coming in the flank on the Shield Ball. Making sure that Shield Ball's own flank is not going to be that effective. The Felon doing some damage and still in a reasonably good position. There's a lot of shields to work with. And there's a lot of ammo in this Shield Ball. Google Frog maintaining their position quite well. Sides. However, here to advance Google Frog's position. While at the same time, Glaive's coming in. Uh, maybe as a flank? It kind of seems like a bit of a mistake in terms of placement. FFC catching that. I believe Google Frog is focusing a lot more. Where are they focused? Oh, they're focused entirely on the sides. That makes sense, yeah. But the sides might work. Google Frog, they take out a factory. I mean, that earlier fusion reactor bombing did knock out a lot of FFC's production capacity. Take it a factory. That could be it. The air plant getting some damage. Not heavy damage, though. Google Fog does not want to commit. Going instead for the G... Okay, there's the mix, but that... That knight can't... Why? Wait, what? How is that knight not able to find a position to hit the scythe from? Oh, 
Well, at any rate, these scythes are being weird. They've been revealed, though. Oh, I see. The Faraday. Yeah. No, the Faraday just got built. What am I thinking? That just got built. So I can see that being still a dis very, very strong deterrent. Same time, though, we have a more of a standard frontline force of shield bots over to the eastern side of the map. And the eastern banks, and they are coming in, but on uh, two waves. Not ideal. Still, though, FFC throws in the towel despite all that. That, well, not despite all that, I mean, kind of because of all that, they were, they were falling behind. Still, FFC, I thought they had a stronger chance here. Like, they were stopping the size, they had a reasonably strong economy, they weren't... Their main army was still holding on. I guess the Ronin were taking it out, but... Actually, that would kind of make sense. Yeah, the Ronin are taking it out. Still, though, FFC was winning on... Wait, how is attrition 32,000, yet... The value killed is FFC's advantage. The heck? That's... Weird. No, FFC... Okay, this isn't lining up at all. Well, at any rate, this is going to be... I think round four? Sorry, round five. And yes, it is indeed round five. We are moving on to round six... And this is going to be interesting. I'm not quite sure who to have as our round six. Because it's kind of all over the place. We have... What do we have for standings right now? So, mana 12. Ah. Mana 12, 5-0. Mana 12, 5 and 0. They are... Can you all see it? Yes, you can. Okay. Mana 12, 5 and 0. Go to Dregs, Petrol, Brandy, Israelite, and Anir, all four and one. So it's kind of down to who wins, like, well, who Mana 12 is up against, which I think is going to. Oh, Petrol, okay. Going on Randy, back on his Google Frog. Oh, Google Frog is three and two. So yeah, whoever. It looks like it's going to be a question of who gets five ones. Because Mana is against Pet Turtle, Gorda is against Randy, Israelite, I think, is against Dregs. Yep. And here's against Yogg-Sothoth. So, of those players, I think the one I've seen the least is Anir. So yeah, we'll do... Anir and Yogg-Sothoth as the first match. Oops. So, Anir and Yogg-Sothoth, they are somewhere. There we are. All right. So, of course, this is round six, so it's the same map as or map set as round three, which is Anvilwood, Jurassic Sands, and Prestige. So it's up to the players which one they want to ban out. I think probably going to see Prestige banned out. I don't know from that. Like, Anvilwood seems like the one that's most popular out of the three. I'd like to see Jurassic Sands, but I think Anvilwood's likely the one we're going to take. So, and, oh, actually, does he actually have a chance? I'm not sure. Okay, so this is more of a question of whether or not Anir loses their chance than if Yogg gains that chance. Still, I haven't seen Anir. Out of the top players, it's, yeah.
Okay, Ketabor. Ketabor pointing out that Randy is streaming their own match. That's fair. I I mean, I've done Randy already. And Randy is not, like, in a top level. I mean, they are in a tiebreaker E position. So that's, that's a thing. Like, they do have a chance of being in the top. Top. Depending on whether or not I believe they were up against Gota. Yeah, they're up against Gota. Now, granted, Gota versus Randy is a really cool match, so, you know, I wouldn't blame you if you were to watch Randy's stream, because, like, Gota and Randy, that is, you know, classic high-level players. But I've got to be honest, there are so many strong players in Zero K these days. It's actually really cool to see. So we are going to be on Anvilwood. As I expected.